The biggest issue we have today is who to listen to. In today's day and age of social media, news outlets, fake news, we don't know who to listen to. We don't know who to trust. So in this episode of the Wealth and Wisdom series, I'll unpack here Proverbs chapter 8, who the wisest and wealthiest king named King Solomon chose to listen to in this episode of the Seven Fears Squad, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? My name's Smart Guy, Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And what a crazy last two weeks we've had. We launched our regional events called To the Moon in Daytona Beach last week. And then I just came back from helping launch a regional event in Las Vegas. We're helping a lot of people with their finances and helping a lot of people with entrepreneurship. We get ahead and fight inflation and taking advantage of entrepreneurship and getting financially educated. But nonetheless, if you're finding value in these videos in this Wealth and Wisdom series, do us a favor, please click like and hit subscribe to our YouTube channel to help spread this knowledge to help people understand that there's ways to make money, wealth, wisdom, and prosperity from the faith-based perspective. And uh, in this episode, I wanna unpack how Proverbs chapter eight, how King Solomon personified wisdom. So let's take a look at this quick phrase I wrote. Thoughts become actions, actions become results, results become our legacy. And usually, you know, oftentimes if you've ever read the book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, T. Harv Eckert talks about how you're programmed is how you think things. And how you think things is how you see things. And how you see things is how you do things. Same relative aspect. By the way, isn't that a biblical truth? So you might have read it in T.R. Ecker's book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. However, if you drill that down even further, it comes from the Bible. So if you look at Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12 through 14, it's a foundational verse for the rest of this chapter. Let's read it together. I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have insights, I have power. Wow, do you want power in your finances? Do you want power in your legacy creation, generational wealth building? Well, consider then embracing wisdom. Now, I know many of you may not be as familiar with King Solomon. He is regarded as one of the wisest and wealthiest kings who ever lived. And when he took over as king, as a young teenage boy, God asked him, what do you want? What gifts do you want for me? What help do you need for me? How can I help you? What do you want? Do you want a bigger army? Do you want money? Do you want relationships? You want girls, boys, whatever the case may be? Hey, I gotta be all inclusive these days. What do you want to help you become a better king? You know what King Solomon said? He says, you know what, God? Of all these things you want to put in my way, of all the things you want to bless me with, I ask for one thing. And what did he ask for? Wisdom. And God was so enamored by his answer. He basically said, I'm paraphrasing here. He basically said, listen, you've surprised me. So in addition to me not only giving you wisdom, I'm going to give you everything that you didn't ask for. I'm going to give you arms. I'm going to give you bigger lands. I'm going to give you wealth, wisdom, and prosperity because you have chose to honor wisdom. You chose to honor God's word, my word. And so in this book of Proverbs chapter eight, and by the way, every week we've done this so far, 31 Proverbs, 31 weeks of the wealth and wisdom series to give you a little flavor of how wealthy King Solomon was in terms of wealth and riches. Let's take a look at this video. Known to have been extremely wise and fabulously wealthy, with the empire reaching its heights of splendor during his reign, he is said to have received a yearly tribute of 666 gold talents, which is approximately 86,000 pounds of gold every year. This, in addition to his income from taxation and trade, makes his net worth over $2.2 trillion. Pretty impressive, huh? Well, if you want to know how and who he listened to, that's the subject of this video. So take a look at Proverbs chapter eight, right here, verse two, it goes like this. At the highest point along the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand beside the gate leading into the city. At the entrance, she cries aloud to you, O people, I call out. I raise my voice to all mankind. You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. Listen, for I have trustworthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true. My lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. 
They are upright to those who have found knowledge. Choose my instruction. Now, that was a lot there, right? So I've drawn this little illustration to kind of help me understand what this might look like. Okay? I'm just trying to put here in context via this illustration the different voices that you and I all hear every day. We hear the voices of our parents. We hear the voices of our family. We hear the voices of everybody in our schools, our teachers, our friends, the people we grew up with, our coworkers, news outlets, fake news, mainstream media, social media. We hear all these different chatters in our ears in order for us to formulate our opinions and for us to make decisions in our life to hopefully help improve our lives so therefore you and I can be wealthy. You and I can create generational wealth if that's what you're interested in. One of the words I looked into was this word I was reading through the scripture I didn't quite understand it, which is the word prudence. Because if you look at this Proverbs chapter 8, 12 through 14, it starts off by saying, I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. And I was kind of confused with that word prudence. Listen, uh, have patience with me, high school education here. So I looked up the definition of prudence. It is defined as saying, showing care and thought for the future. Prudence is sharing care and thought for the future. So in other words, if you're making decisions in your life, is it with prudence or is it for the now? See, oftentimes you and I make decisions because we just want to be happy now. We want to ease this pain now. We want to make sure we uh, get to where we want to go to now. We make decisions for the today, for the now moment. But wisdom is saying, hey, time out. You need to make it with prudence, show care and thought for the future. I'm in the financial services world. We need to make prudent financial decisions for retirement planning, for taking care of people when they're older, for taking care of people when they're born and going to college. We need to take care of those decisions in a prudent way. So oftentimes we're baited these days into making decisions for the now, today. What makes us happy right now, which may not be the right decision because it may not be prudent. It's a checkers type of decision. It's not a chess type of a decision, if you know what I mean. So in other words, people play for one move when you should actually be planning and seeing three, five, 10, 15, 20 moves ahead. It's often said that amateur chess players only know the first three, four, five moves. It's easy to know this move, you need to know this move, boom, boom, that's an amateur chess player. And grandmaster chess players know their 12th move, their 14th move, their 16th move, and beyond when they first starting to play the game of chess. So let's break down Proverbs chapter eight. If you want to get through life, making not only wise decisions, but also prudent decisions, it relates to your business decisions, it relates to your financial decisions. Number one, always choose wisdom over money. Choose wisdom over money. And I know that doesn't sit well with many of you reading this. It didn't sit well with me. Let's take a look at what it means here. Proverbs chapter eight, verse 10 through 11, it reads like this. Choose my instruction instead of silver, knowledge rather than choose gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with her. In other areas of Proverbs, King Solomon also references your reputation is also more valuable than rubies and gold. In other words, your reputation is based on what? Your reputation is based on your decisions, on the things that you say, on the things that you declare, and actually the things that you come through with. That is your reputation. But your reputation, if you unpack it further, if you go back, it's based on your decisions. It's based on what you embrace. It's embraced on how you think things and how you do things and how you do things become results and results becomes your legacy, becomes your reputation. So if this has made an impact on you, please put it in the comment section below this affirmation. I choose wisdom over money. I choose wisdom over money. Number two, in addition to choosing wisdom over money, number two talks about loving wisdom first, which means loving God's word first, loving God first. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter eight, verse 17 through 21. It reads like this. I love those who love me and those who seek me, find me. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than fine gold. What I yield surpasses choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness, along the paths of justice, bestowing a rich inheritance on those who love me and making their treasuries full. Woo! Oftentimes we love that paycheck, don't we? We love that commission check. 
We love closing on that deal. We love those royalty checks coming in. But what does God, what does King Solomon tell us to love first? It says to love God first. We just read in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 7, saying this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. There's many different times that you're asked to trust God, to love God, which may feel very intangible because you can't necessarily touch it. But if you choose God, you love God, guess what happens? God, it's basically God's way of testing you and filtering out to make sure he can bless you immensely. So if you affirm with me that this makes sense to you and you would love to incorporate this into your life, please put it in the comment section below. I love wisdom first. I love wisdom first in the comment section below. Number three, wisdom doesn't trend. Have you noticed those trending audios, those trending reels on TikTok, the trending tweets, the trending news line, the trend in the news cycle of the day? And usually what happens to those trends, they go away, they peak, and then they fall, and then they're forgotten about. Well, do you want your money to be that way? Do you want your legacy to be that way? Do you want your inheritance to be that way? Or do you want it to be long lasting? Well, that's what King Solomon, that's what God's word is saying through King Solomon. Say, hey, listen, man. Choose wisdom. Why? Because it doesn't trend. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22 to 31. It reads like this. The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works, before his deeds of old. I was formed long ages ago at the very beginning when the world came to be. When there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water. Before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the world or its fields or any dust of the earth, I was there when he set the heavens in place. When he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters could not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then it was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. Woo! <laughs> Pretty deep. What's he basically saying? What King Solomon is saying is that wisdom has always been there with God. And if you're not looking to trend your wealth, you're not looking for trends, you want your, your wealth and your inheritance, the decisions you make in life, prudent decisions to be made, it needs to be anchored. It needs to be grounded. See, oftentimes people make decisions today based on the trend or what's cool or what's in fashion. And I'll tell you this, wisdom is never in fashion. Wisdom is anchored and when you think something fashionable or trendy or hot is going to come your way and it takes you away from making prudent decisions it takes you away from wise decisions chances are you just got caught up and you're listening to other things the downfall to this i've been caught up in this many many times once your decisions aren't made on values and principles and, and wisdom you're easily sold into other things you're easily believing into other things it's easy to fool you. What did it say here in the beginning? If you, what, it was, what was wisdom trying to say in the beginning? If it says here in verse 5, You who are simple, gain prudence. You who are foolish, set your hearts on it. That's what wisdom is trying to tell you. Wisdom doesn't trend. So if you affirm with me that you do not want your finances going up and down, up and down, your income going up and down, up and down, please put in the comment section below this affirmation. I choose wisdom, not trends. I choose wisdom, not trends. Number four, listen to me means life and favor. Listening to wisdom, listening to God's word. King Solomon's trying to tell you, check this out or deal with the consequences. Let's take a look at what he says here in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32 to 36. It reads like this. Now then, my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not disregard it. Blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For those who find me find life and receive favor from the Lord. But those who fail to find me harm themselves. All who hate me love death. Yes! It's pretty uh, cut and dry there, wouldn't you say? So I'm curious, what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about the decisions you've made in your life. How are you thinking about planning for retirement? How are you thinking about making sure you're planning for uh, any layoffs or furloughs or essential or non-essential? How are you planning for this life after the pandemic? 
How are you planning on things that relate to creating opportunities and opening doors for your family? Are you seeking wisdom? Or is it constantly in a position of desperation, entitlement? Woe is me, I can't help myself. The world owes me things. Is it like that? Or are you saying, yo, if you're gonna depend on something, depend on wisdom, depend on God. That's the only thing. It's not government, it's not charity, it's not friends and family, it's not an entrepreneur, it's not a politician, it's not the lottery, it's not even your money. It's wisdom. Because in finding the wisdom, in finding God's word, in finding truth through prudence, dwelling together with wisdom, guess what you're gonna find? You're gonna find the keys that unlocks wealth, wisdom, prosperity, and happiness for you and your family. Now, I can't guarantee it. How can I can't guarantee? Because I don't know what you're gonna do after watching this video. I don't know if you're even reading this after I'm reading this right now. I'd encourage you, don't depend on me to read the book of Proverbs chapter eight for you. I encourage you to crack open the Bible and see what God's word is revealing to you. And it's always going to change. That's why it's called the living word. Because as you grow, how you perceive things and how you think things will be how you receive things and how you act upon things. How you read things in your 20s is much different than you read things in your 30s. How you read things in your 30s is much different than how you read things in your 40s, on and on and on. Before I let you go, please check out these other videos right here on the Wealth and Wisdom series. We've done another seven episodes here to unpack this book of Proverbs, as well as checking out this video right here, How the Bible Helped Me to Become a Millionaire. That being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, put it in the comment section below. Is it helping you? Let me know, put it in the comment section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys.